Okay. So welcome again, everyone, to Sunday School. Today is Community Hymn Singing, and we'll be singing English Methodist, or we'll be studying. We'll first study it and then sing it. English Methodist Hymn number 313. And I, 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 I posted it and sent it out to everybody so that we could get a chance to kind of like go, go through the hymn and find relevant Bible verses so that today will be an enriching study. But first of all, um, let's start with, let's get to know the, the writer of this hymn. Does anybody know anything about her? Frances Jane Van Alstein. Does anybody know anything about her? But I, everybody knows this hymn, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so do we know one or two things about the person who wrote this, this hymn that we all so enjoy? Anything. She has, um, she has various aliases. And one of her alias, one of her common known alias is Fanny Crosby. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Good job. Oh my God. Okay. So what else do we know about her? Well, can I cheat? No. <laughs> it, it defeats the whole purpose. Oh my word. But I'm just reading that she began composing him at age of six. Okay. Mm. Okay. We'll take that. She, she began composing. She was, uh, she was blind or disabled, sort of. She was blind. What, just she was six weeks old and she had a cold. What they thought was just a common cold, but she got an inflammation somehow. That inflammation led to the loss of her sight at six weeks of age. So we can technically say she's been blind all of her life. Mm. Where do we does anybody know where she's from? Oh. You can Google it if you want. Does anybody know where she's from? It, it says she's from Connecticut. Oh, well, she moved to Connecticut, but she was born in Brewster, New York. Oh, OK. okay. Yeah. And, and some of the things she was known for, what kind of what kind of work do we think she would have been involved in? Missionary. Missionary work. She was an American missionary worker a poet and a composer. And she was also known as the queen of gospel songwriters. Mm. And she wrote a whole lot of, I, I don't know if it's proper to um, compare her to Charles Wesley, but I they say here that she wrote about 8,000 hymns and gospel songs. Mm -hmm. Oh so, my God. Yes. Yeah, so she was, I remember this is somebody who got blind at eight, six weeks of age. But here's something I want us to listen to, something that she said. And then that throws us into this hymn. And then we can begin to kind of understand her state of mind and the, the thoughts in her mind as she's writing all this hymn. And does anybody know some of her other hymns? Any of our other hymns that we know? Ask me not a gentle savior. Mm. Blessed assurance. Mm. Rescue the perishing. Yeah, that's all Francis Jane Van Alstein. But here's what she said. I guess during an interview, I don't know who she was talking to, but she said, mm -hmm. she said, it seemed intended by the blessed providence of God that I should be blind all my life. Okay. 
and I thank him for the dispensation. If perfect earthly sight were offered me tomorrow, I would not accept it. I might not have sung hymns to the praise of God if I had been distracted by the beautiful and interesting things about me. Let's keep that in, let's keep that at the back of our mind. So this is somebody who was saying that I thank you. And I'm sure she was born into a Christian home. So I'm sure her parents prayed. It has to be. They are. Even her grandmother was the gang 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 Christian. So they, they must have prayed really hard, but all, in all of that, she said, I thank God for this dispensa dispensation of blindness. It tells us a whole lot about this woman who was going to learn her song today. And then she further added, when I get to heaven, the first face that shall even gladden my sight will be that of my Savior. Yes, hence blessed assurance. Mm. Jesus is mine. So that takes us to today's <laughs> hymn, English Methodist hymn number 313. To God be the glory, great things he has yes, done. Thanks. When when you sing that song, and we have sung this song over and over, some of us know all the three verses off the top of our head. But when you sing that song, what are the first thoughts that come to your head before we go through the verse by verse when you sing that song? What is the lamb? Hallelujah. From the brief history of this very author. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Having considered herself and considered her situation as dispensation God has given to her. And I saw in her someone who is happy the way she is. Imagine her saying, if God has given me eyes, I would have been distracted by the things on me. I wouldn't have wrote all those hymns to God. So he understood, she understood that in every situation, God is to be praised. God is to be glorified. And from there, she linked it to the salvation that God wrought through Jesus Christ. Mm. So I can see thanksgiving, praising God, glorifying God in our situation, in our conditions. We find ourselves that this is him. And this author is pointing us to that in all situations, in all circumstances, we should glorify the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Reverend. Does anybody else have anything else to add? Yes, I think I, um, to whom God calls, he equips. Amen. God knows what uh she is going to go through. And um, she uh, she was equipped for that um, condition. Mm. Mm. It's just to show us that God is always with us. And we will be, we will, we will be, he will be behind us in anything we do. Provided he okay, okay it. Whether is the lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you what so much, man. Any other mm -hmm. additions to the yes, mercy. Okay. Um, I'm adding that uh, she's just uh, happy as my uh, as the Reverend said, and he, he just point out that no matter the offense we are committed. The blood of Jesus has just purchased us that he will forgive us, provided we believe. And that's the, that moment we receive Jesus as our Savior. So she's really using it also for um, 
evangelize to others so that you will be able to know no matter how offensive our sin, no matter how we feel that, oh, I will not be forgiven. You are forgiven because he has given us a perfect redemption, which if we believe, he will pardon us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Maria. Sister Maria, I saw your hand up. I'm sorry, late president. Sister Maria, I thought I saw your hand up. Yeah, what is the lamb? Hallelujah. Um, actually, this entire, <clears throat> entire song always brings me back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, um, that talks about in all things be thankful. Um, because if we have it smooth sailing, we will think it is um in our own our own might that created yeah. successful space. Uh, and so for for some of the challenges that we encounter, um they draw us closer to God because you know that He did not place that to be a punishment, but to be a teaching tool. Uh -huh. um, Sometimes when you have a loss in your family, God is trying to do a lesson and you should just be grateful, thankful, um, you know, no matter what, even if it is during <clears throat> a painful time um, to have gratitude. Because um, uh, when, I, when I read this song and, and I sang this song, uh, all I could think about is a Thanksgiving song. Uh -huh. What is the lamb? Hallelujah. In all things, give thanks. True. To God. But did they? Uh, uh, really, uh, mine is a question, and I'm going to ask a rhetorical question because uh, a few Sundays ago, we discussed uh, about healing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that day, we talked about the idea that, uh, yes, you know, if you pray and you fast, you know, the healing will come. At what point do you uh, accept, you know, that, well, this is what God wants to do right now, or this is God's uh, orchestration, or God, God allowed this to happen? When does faith becomes unbelief? When you pray and you pray and you pray and it just didn't happen. And the opposite of what you desire is what happened. I mean, you have said that uh, Fanny Crosby's parents were Christians. They must have prayed. And she was blind all her, all her life long. How do we learn from this as believers that not every miracle that we seek will happen the way we expect it. Mm. Mm. What is the love? Hallelujah. We, oh, we take an example from a popular brother Paul. Yes. When he was uh, praying about uh, whatever happened to him, he prayed and prayed and said, well, this is a mark that God wants me to go to grave with. I have to accept it. So when we believe and we pray, according to this uh, lady, she's just happy because this is the way that God has made it hard to believe that she's God. I know that this uh, her situation can even make people uh, what I, uh, what, why should I even believe again when mm -hmm. I'm a Christian, I'm blind? Mm -hmm. That will you know, discourage them. Be, uh, what are you saying? I'm born in a Christian family. My uh, my grandmother, my mother is a top then. Why should I even be blind? That means God hated me. My mm. So the world hated me. So why why oh. you... You just go ahead doing any kind of, you won't even, but this is telling us as Christians, no matter what comes on our way, no matter how big, according to our brother Paul said, 
God has given us what we cannot, we, we a temptation which we cannot, uh, what we can bear. And he will always use a way to see us through. So what I'm saying is this, from all these examples and from the example of the uh, gospel, we are saying that there are many uh, sicknesses that yes, it's happened to a man that when you pray, if God did not do it at that time and did not do it all your you have to be happy and believe God. It's you know, whatever, it's not only sickness, it's only something coming on. There are many things that come your way that you have to accept. This is the what God has made me. Because myself, sometimes I will say, God knows. This is hmm. how I accept my own. Uh, if things happen like this, I will say, God knows. What is the lamp? Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Sister Mercer. Sister Cecilia, you have your hand yes. down. Yes, worthy is the lamb. Hallelujah. Um, Brother GD, I'm glad you brought that up uh, about healing uh, that we talked about a few weeks ago. Because I've often felt, well, throughout my life, that, you know, as humans, we pray for healing. We pray for healing if somebody's body is ill um, and we want them to get better. But that's us as humans. I think one of the way, ways that God does heal the body or the soul, it may be death here on earth. It may be hmm. death of the body and he's healed them and they get to go home. You know, they get the opportunity uh, to be with him. And I've, all, I've, I've always thought that, that that is another way of healing. It's difficult for us because we're humans. Uh, but if we go to that spiritual place and we continue to have faith and we continue to uh, trust and be a believer, I think it's another way we could think of healing. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Thank you so much, Sister Cecilia. That's yeah, that's that, that's a big time. What is the lamb? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to what uh, my brothers and sisters have said, I also I was just reading through her bio on the web, and I think there is a lot that we can learn from from her story. First. Uh, she was the only child oh of her mm -hmm. mother and father, although mm -hmm. her father had a, a child from a previous marriage. Oh. However, the father actually died when she was still an infant. So she was raised by her mother and her maternal grandmother. That's the first thing we wanted to know. Mm -hmm. There's no evidence that the mother remarried or wow. had any other child. So the mother had a child, only child who was blind. Mm. That's number one. It, mm. was not that, it was not that they did not seek medical attention. So there were certain uh, things that were initially applied to her eyes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that um, she actually thought was what made uh, made her blind. However, the medical opinion was that uh, her situation was congenital. Mm -hmm. And then at age five, there was another attempt. A surgeon also examined her to see if there could be surgery done on the eyes and the surgery concluded that the situation was inoperable. So that was when the final decision was made that she was going to remain like that. So what do we learn from that? One is that um, we should not immediately conclude that the situation of adversity was what God intended. Mm -hmm. Because, and she was born into a Christian family. Both the mm -hmm. mother and grandmother were Puritan. They, they had a yeah. Puritan background. In fact, story has it that the Crosby, which 
she traced to her ancestor, was one of the original founders of a Harvard uh, College, Harvard University today. So she came from a very prestigious family. So, but my point is that, uh, yes, it's important to have faith and to continue to understand our situation from the perspective of faith. We should also understand that all the knowledge uh, that God had made possible should also be deployed for our own good. Mm -hmm. And this family mm -hmm. attempted that. It was after medical science concluded that her situation was going to be permanent. Now, the next thing for the family was that, how do they deal with this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do they deal with this? We also saw that they didn't give him up, I mean, give her up. Some other family might have said, oh, this is not something we can deal with for the mm -hmm. rest of her life. Mm -hmm. So she was not adopted by another family, it was the family. So they poured love on her and gave her, because the mother, the mother said, she, even though she was um, um, blind, but they wanted her to have the same quality, the kind of quality education that mm -hmm. other normal children will have. Yeah. And this is also a lesson to all of us. There should mm -hmm. be no discrimination among yeah. our children. Their mm -hmm. situations may be different. Some may come naturally to be bright and all of those things. Others may be may have a different kind of uh, a kind of uh, challenges, but our love to, for them and to them as parents should not in any way uh, diminish or any way should should not be based upon our perceived qualities in them because they are all gifts from from God. So, and um, of course she did say the passage that uh, Sister Chinwe read that um, if she had been, in fact, that if she was giving her sight back, she would not accept it because mm -hmm. she saw her blindness as a condition. That's one position to take. That's one position to take. If, if, uh, if, if miracle had happened, that her blindness had been restored, would she truly have rejected it? I'm not so sure. That didn't happen, but she accepted her situation as something that, okay, she's going to deal with it and she's going to use it even as a basis to bring about greater uh, works, which is what we are discussing tonight. So there are many things that I believe we can pick up from this, from her life story and from the way her family embraced her. What is the language? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for sharing. I think we've, like, we've hit all of the very important points that we need to take out of um, Fanny's life. And um, I don't know, maybe somewhere along the line, we also will kind of talk about doctrine and what, doc, what you know, what we're going through today, because there's a whole lot of, everybody, everybody wants to do miracles. And everybody's going, three quarters of the people are going to church today because of miracles. Miracles mm -hmm. are good, don't get me wrong, but I don't know. I I guess we'll get to that as we as we go along. Maybe, maybe something is going on with this, maybe this is a new doctrine, I don't know, but it's, it's, miracle has taken over. So we'll go to um, verse one. He says, to God be the glory, great things he had done. And we said that thanksgiving, acceptance. Is that? So what verses come to our mind when we hear, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Uh, probably <laughs> Ephesians 3.21. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time, forever and ever. Amen. This is uh, Paul's uh, writing to, uh, to the Ephesians, you know, uh, in his discourse about what God has done. If you look at us and you say, I, I bow in prayer before the Father, Every family in heaven and on earth gets its true name from him. 
you know, as it were, referring to the work of salvation, what it bought for us. Uh, let me now tie it to Fanny's case. How could Fanny actually talk about to God be the glory, great things he has done? I mean, if you are to look at it from the circular, what great thing has God okay. done for her in her blindness is the question unbeliever and unbeliever will ask. But, you know, in her conviction of her salvation, she, she sees greatness of what God has done. In fact, the following line almost quoted John 3, 16, oh, verbatim. So, so you can see that what great thing she might have been referring to, I've not read her history. I'm just trying to uh, deduce something from what I'm saying here. Uh, the great thing that she's referring to is her salvation. She says, so love he, he the world that he gave us his son. That is the great thing that he has done. And what can we get from that? Well, uh, we, I jumped to another hymn, say, when upon the billows we are tempted, a tempest tossed, when we feel discouraged, thinking all is gone, we need to count our blessings and not focus on the challenge. What is the lamb? Hallelujah. Thank you so much, my Jesus. So you, you kind of learned verse one and verse two, verse one, thanking God for everything. And so into verse two, we think this is why she's actually thanking God for her salvation. And um, so. What is the lamb? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, just to follow up on what uh, Rajide said, again, credit to her mother and grandmother that when she, by the way, she was a Methodist. Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> that uh, they helped her to memorize long passages from the Bible. Mm. So this particular hymn, we were also told was actually inspired by Galatians chapter one, verses three to five. Galatians one. Two. Galatians one, three to five. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father mm -hmm. and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, mm -hmm. that he might deliver us from the, this present evil, evil world, according to the will of God, and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So Amen. The, they said that passage is the inspiration for the entire hymn itself. Galatians 1, 3 to 5. That's interesting. Mm. Mm. Oh, this is heavy. Thank you so much, Brother Shango, because those verses kind of, that's line, line 3, line 4. That's, yeah, that is everything. That is essentially the story here. Praise the mm. Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory which he had done. Mm. Huh. Any other thoughts on verse 1? So what? Um, we must hear from Canada now. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Canada, I want to hear from you, though. I want you to kind of put this together, because from from what we see, from what we're hearing from her, and we and we and we're thinking, or we're coming to a conclusion, we're we're thinking that her joy, her thanksgiving, was in was in this son of God who came and yielded his life an atonement for sin. Do we see that being what Christians are thankful for today? I mean, is, is that our major, like your first discussion with a Christian and what they're giving thanks for is 
oh my God, thank God for my salvation. Where would I where would I be without without Jesus? Or is it is it other things like miracle soap, miracle water? I, I'm just like a little bit. I just think we should just discuss that a little bit because, like, but Shadow had pointed out, this Galatians one three to five tell a big story. So I I want I want to relate it to us. Is that how we're also seeing this journey that we're on? Is that how we're also seeing this this wonderful thing that happened that God gave His only begotten Son? to come and yield his life. Is, is is that the first thought that crosses your mind when you think about, oh my God, this heavenly race. Okay. This is what it means. Let, 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 Sister Chiwe, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> let, let's approach it from this angle. When it comes to time of testimony, what do people typically hmm. uh, present? As their testimony is this something that is uh when i use the word tangible here i don't mean important is it something that they can see feel touch smell or is it something that they cannot see per se in other words what is the natural leaning of human mind it is <laughs> what they can see is what their senses can experience so to answer your question you know maybe the salvation yeah we i appreciate it but it's not the car that i will ride to work tomorrow it's not the money that i will spend at walmart it's not the food that i will put on the table so the natural tendency is to think about our immediate need our immediate desires not to think about you know no at the least the cost of the salvation at best the perfectness let me use that of the salvation look at verse two. Oh, perfect oh, you jumped the past. it's frozen oh. mm -hmm. mr canada yeah. you can you can pick up his thoughts Please. I wish I wish I can read this mic though. You could. <laughs> Christian can see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, what is the lamb? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, here he goes. Okay. He comes back. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, why don't you finish your thoughts? Then I can continue. Oh yes. I, 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 I said you know. She her situation is different from that of a typical Christian because the typical Christian can see. Are you still hearing me? Yes. yes. Okay. The typical Christian can see. She cannot. So hmm. she can see inwardly. The typical Christian focus is on the out outward. So she can appreciate that salvation better than you and I. What is that? Hmm. Hallelujah. Okay. So, brother, bro, uh, thank you so much, brother Jide. So, brother, uh, brother Shala, when you when you attempt to answer this question, and please, I also uh, want to hear from the rev, um, from the ordained ministers. Chief, brother Jide used the word "typical Christian." I I don't know. I don't know if we should attempt to define that because. I think Christian is Christian. That's well, there's only one definition of Christian. I'm not trying to, I, I'm trying to say uh any Christian that you meet on the road. Okay. Okay. You know, so, okay, brother. Not that uh, there are better and weaker classification. I'm not going yeah. there. Okay. Huh? okay. What right. is the, what is the lamb? Hallelujah. Um I think. Uh, yes, the av well, maybe we call it the average or normal Christian, you know, <laughs> what most of us, are, and I, I shy away from defining people like that, you know, but what most of us, what we, at a level, that is where we, 
we are about our daily concern. And I think we need to go beyond that. And I think mm. that's what this story is talking, is telling us about, you know, we need to go beyond that. We need to begin to be uh, more conscious of our spiritual life. Actually, mm. I was I was looking at uh, Ephesians chapter two, verse verse ten. He says, "For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand." that we should walk in them. So when you think about it, it, it there, there are two parts to that verse. There is what God has done, and then there is the part that we have to do, you know, yeah. is the, that we should walk in them. And I was thinking about it uh, just before, uh, very reverently, somebody gave us the, 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 the background there, the story. For many people that are blind, that's the end of their story. You know, but in our own case, I was reading online that she wrote eight eight thousand songs. Now, mm -hmm. what what I'm getting at is this: every one of us, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says that God has a plan for us, mm -hmm. a plan to prosper mm -hmm. us. So every one of us, we have there is a um, God has a plan and a purpose for our lives, mm -hmm. and I think as believers, as, as believers, we need to attempt to figure out what that is and begin to pursue it you know and generally if you just if you just in the general terms is to is to glorify god you know whatever we do because i look i look at her case and i say well yeah she's been handicapped with her sight but despite that she fulfilled her calling yeah. Because I was reading there, they said they actually contracted that to be writing three three hymns a week. You know, that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. you know? And given the background that uh, very lovely for me shared with us, oh, I could see why she could do that. Because if she had to memorize the Bible, those things will just begin to flow as the inspiration comes, you know. So what I'm saying is this. We as believers, we need to raise it up a, 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 to the higher level and not just yeah it's good to have the the, the good things of life but it is more than that mm. you know christianity is more than that christianity is, is actually serving god and not shying away from uh challenges what is the lamb hallelujah what is the lamb hallelujah, hallelujah. I agree with what uh, Professor uh, Kimbo and uh, Omelio Ju just said. Mm. But I, what I will add is that I don't think the seeing the miracles of salvation and the miracles of God's benevolence in the area of tangible blessings, they are not mutually exclusive. Mm. So I don't think we should, <clears throat> because we want to avoid <laughs> idolizing our blessings, move to the other extreme of not acknowledging them sufficiently. There is a popular song which we all sing, can't your blessings name them wrong? Mm -hmm. You will see what God has done. And mm -hmm. for many of us, when we are naming them, Psalm 91 is the template mm -hmm. that we use. If you read through Psalm 91, it's about God protecting us against all kinds of dangers. So many things. I mean, you you yes. and I are familiar with the template of Psalm 91. Yes. Uh -huh. so it, it, is not, it is not wrong. It is not sinful to acknowledge God's involvement in our lives in all those respects listed or indicated in Psalm 91. At the same time, Galatians 1, 3 to 5 is equally important. So mm -hmm. the two are not mutually exclusive in, from the perspective of because both aspects of our lives really to me are in God's hands. And mm -hmm. um, if um, someone was saying, I, I think it was even at a, a, the service today that for some people, if you ask them, um, how did you achieve what you achieved? Instead of acknowledging God, they will be like, that to me is sinful. 
-hmm. you can see God in your professional success and your family success and all those other things, that's problematic. At the same time, life is more than all of those things, but it doesn't mean that those things are not important. I think we should also... Okay. Uh, what is the land? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to add this uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 27, that I think one of those things that she prayed God for is the wisdom. Despite his uh, her handicap or her challenges, it's still, she still uh, acknowledged the wisdom of God. Mm. This verse says, to God only wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Mm. And it's one of the verses that's attached to this hymn. So I think she was thanking God for the wisdom that uh, God gave her to even wrote all those hymns because our reverend was saying that she wrote about 800 hymns. 8,000. Uh, 8,000 hymns. Yes, right. So I think she's thanking God for the wisdom, the knowledge, mm -hmm. and the understanding that she received to do much exploits for God. Hmm. And as Christians too, we should be able to acknowledge the, the wisdom of God in whatever we are doing. That is not by power, it's not by might, but by his grace. What is it now? Hallelujah. Thank you so much, man. Hmm. Great, great, great contributions. Any other thoughts as we move along? Any other thoughts? Who hasn't said anything? Who wants to say something? I want to, <clears throat> I want to say something. Yes, ma'am. In, in addition, I think uh, um, verse one, the fourth line, and open the life gate that all may go in. I think that has to be with the resurrection of God that opens the way for our salvation. He died and he rose. And then that opens a way, a pathway for us to follow and get our salvation. <clears throat> Thank you so much, man. <clears throat> what is yes. the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Mike. Mm. Any other thoughts on verse one? So we can go to verse two. What is the lamb? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. uh, just a salvation from all the contributions. What I observe is this uh, lady is not focusing on what this world is. Mm. She, she saw, she, you know, she see herself as somebody is passing by. He didn't say anything about the world. He didn't say anything good about my body. I was healed. I went to this and I came back. She didn't see it that way. She only know that there is a life after this life and mm -hmm. which that is internal, uh, that will never end. And she, she will sit uh, close to God, discussing with him face to face. What is the Lamb? Hallelujah. Thank you so much, man. So li living with eternity in focus. Hmm. Wonderful contributions here. Um, okay, so let's go to verse 2. All perfect redemption, the purchase of blood. To every believer, the promise of God. The vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. What what what, what do we get out of this? What comes to mind? Or what are the many things that come to mind? Because here yeah, she's kind of breaking down the process of salvation. 
and it, it looks as if she's even reminding us of the story of the things. Who so said to Jesus, when you, please, Baba, I beg, please, when you get to, please, where, rem remember me. She's saying it is that simple. So what are our thoughts on this one? On verse two. What is the lamb? Hallelujah. What is the lamb? Hallelujah. You know, the vow, I mean, it portrays the fact that there's, uh, no matter how heavy, serious, bad our sins can be, so mm -hmm. far we repent and come to him, he will surely forgive us. Mm -hmm. So all we need to do is to come to him. Even if you feel so bad, so wretched, so unworthy, so, and the whole world has um, abandoned you, he will never abandon whoever comes to him. May God help us. Amen. Amen. Any more thoughts? Well, uh, in that, okay, go ahead, please. In absence of anybody speaking, I was going to uh, bring attention to something. Go ahead. What is the lamb? Hallelujah. Uh, I, will, yeah. I will still refer this to John 3, 16. That whosoever believe in him will have eternal life. What is the lamb? Hallelujah. Okay, so we still see still we still see threads of John 3, 16 and 17 running into our second verse. And also, like Brashegu said, Galatians 1, 3, 5, also going going along. Okay. Any other thoughts? Yeah, what is that? Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I uh, <clears throat> I'm just looking at that verse two. Uh, the 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 word that came to me was through Jesus Christ our Lord we have access unto God. Hmm. Remember the Bible tells us that we should come boldly to His throne of grace. You know, and uh, and there are quite a number of verses: uh, Romans five verse two, uh, Ephesians two eighteen, and Ephesians three twelve. They talk about access. Eph Ephesians two eighteen says, "For through Him." we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Um, chapter 3, verse 12 says, in, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. And Romans 5, 2 says, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And I guess, he, again, it goes to what we have said about this verse earlier, that no matter what where we are, no matter what our sins are, Jesus Christ our Lord has given us access to the Father. And all we have to do is to believe in him, <laughs> confess him as Lord and Savior, and live for him. What is the love? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Varsha. So Any what I was going to offer is about that short sentence perfect redemption perfect uh -huh. redemption uh -huh. uh, let's go to hebrews uh, chapter 9 verses uh, 11 through 14 but christ has already come to be the high priest he is the high priest of the good things we now have but christ does not serve in a place like the tent that those other priests served in. He serves in a better place. Unlike that tent, this one is perfect. Mm. It was not made by anyone here on earth. It does not belong to this world. Christ entered the most holy place only one time, enough for all time. 
he entered the most holy place by using his own blood, not the blood of goats or young bulls. He entered there and made us free from sin forever. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a cow was sprinkled on those who were no longer pure enough to enter the place of worship. The blood, of, the blood and ashes made them pure again, but only their bodies. So surely the blood, of, the blood sacrifice of Christ can do much more. Christ offered himself through the eternal spirit as a perfect sacrifice to God. His blood will make us completely clean from the evil we have done. It will give us clear consciences so that we can worship the living God. Mm -hmm. Perfect redemption, the purchase of blood. Wow. Wow. Shan the purchase of blood. That was Hebrews 9, 11 to 14, right? 11 to 14. And I read from the easy to read version, ETRV. Okay. Yes, yes. Right. Thank you so much for that. Okay, should we go what to the story? What is the love? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will refer to Isaiah 1 18. Still on the same. Uh, Forgiveness of sin. It says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Uh -huh. uh, this one, based on the forgiveness of sin, and the, when God forgives you, it means there is eternal life. For those people who confess their sin, and their sins are forgiven. What is the love? Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, so the vilest offender who truly believes. So there's no, there's no, oh, I'm, oh my God, I'm so sinful. God, I'm, I'm sure God doesn't want to see me. There's no such thing. Okay. Okay, verse three. Great things he had taught us, great things he had done. And great are rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our rapture, when Jesus we see. So for, 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 for a starter, he said great things he had taught us. So we have to allow ourselves to be taught, it sounds like. That's the very first thing. If, you, if you're not working with, if you don't have a relationship with him and you're not allowing him to teach you, you won't even begin to understand the great things he has done. Was it done? What is the lamb? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, great things he has taught us, you know, for us to know the great things God uh, has for us is to be acquainted mm. with his word, the Bible. And when we read the Bible, we know the teachings of God. And God does not stop at that point, uh, when he taught us, he, mm. he equally uh, took the step, you know, to do something wonderful in our lives. If we are ready to obey, you know, things he has taught. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, you know, he gave us his only begotten son. And he said, whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So the things he has taught us is that we should believe in his son, accept him as Lord and Savior. And uh, whoever does that, that great thing, that is the work of salvation, will happen 
in such a person's life. So to see that uh, God is the God, the Father that speaks and brings it to come to pass, but ours is to play our part in order for him to be able to do that uh, great thing, you know, that he has taught us. And then um, it goes further to say, uh, and great are rejoicing through Jesus, the Son. So we could see at the end of everything, having listened to the great things God has taught and the aligning to happen in our lives, you see, at the end of our journey, we're surely going to rejoice with the Son. What is the Lamb? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much. There are, there are three things uh that Mama has highlighted there. Number one, great thing he has taught us. Mama has related that to his word, through his word. But great things he has done. Uh I am linking that to the miracles and the work that God has done on us, for us, through us. And he talked about through Jesus Christ uh, 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 and great uh, is our rejoicing through Jesus Christ, the son, talking about our salvation. But where I want to compliment what Mama has just said is that small word, but. The English uh, teachers will tell us when you see the word, but following a sentence, that's coming a twist of some kind. So the bot here refers to, look, all those three things are great, but guess what? Something greater is coming. Yeah. Something greater is coming. That takes me to 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. He says, but as the scriptures say, no one has ever seen. No one has ever heard. No one has ever imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has shown us these things through the Spirit. These things are greater than those first three. Is the way that I'm reading that particular passage. Great things he has done, but greater, purer, higher will be the wonder that you will experience when finally we see Jesus. You see, what is the Lamb? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Brother Judy. Sister Linda, worthy is, worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. With this verse 3, um, I see in Revelation ninth chapter 19 verses 5 through 8 mm. that really captures this and it's from the New International Version and it reads then a voice came from the throne saying praise our God all you his servants you who fear him both great and small then I heard what sounded like a great multitude like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder shouting, hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Mm. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the lamb has come mm. and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean was given her to wear. And I see that is that when Jesus is come, he is our lamb and we will be his bride. Amen. Worthy is a lamb. Hallelujah. Oh, that reference you. again, please. Oh. Revelations. Revelations. Yes. Five to eight, is that? Yes. Hmm. Whoa, thank you so much for sharing, Sister Linda. So now that begins to paint the picture of this, of what Brother Jesus just explained. But, that okay, we know the word. We're learning the word. He's, he's teaching us. Um, 
we see the things he has done. But purer mm -hmm. and higher and greater will be our wonder, our rapture when Jesus will see. And that's what Sister Linda just read out to us and that kind of instant picture. I, I, it's, we can't even begin to imagine it right here, but it'll be purer, it will be higher, and it'll be greater than anything we've, we've ever imagined or we've ever seen. Hmm. Any further thoughts? What is the lamb? Hallelujah. As a brother told us that uh, the, um, the parents or the mother and I had to where I can, you know, get uh, her great things that God had done. Is from Psalm one twenty six, two and three said, "Our mouth will fill with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy." Then it was with said among the nations, the Lord had done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we'll be filled with joy. So it's still um, he, or from this uh, analogy now, great things that have already done for the Israelites, they pass through the water, they were not, uh, they, they are, their enemies sank into the water and they are rejoicing as who will rejoice we are not cut off with the world. We are still growing to meet our God. What is the Lamb? Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Sister Mercy. You said that was Psalm 126. What verses? Two and three. Two and three. Okay. Thank you so much. Any other thoughts? We want to hear from everybody because this is really so interesting. Because this is one of my favorite hymns. And I know 90% of us on here love this hymn. So it's interesting that we've broken it down this way. And I know that the next time we sing this hymn, it's gonna, the meaning will be different for us. I, I trust God for that. So any other thoughts? Please, let's hear from everybody. What is the matter? Hallelujah. <laughs> I want us. I want to take us to verse two again, okay. and um, this is this has to do with the condition of uh, for of receiving forgiveness from Jesus. The last two sentences says the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. So if we move up a, a, a line to every believer, the promise of God, there's a, a promise of perfect redemption mm -hmm. purchased by blood. Now, my question here is, um, what does it mean to truly believe? <laughs> so the, of the, the vilest offender will receive a pardon from Jesus the moment he or she truly believes. But every believer, there is no further qualification. It's just, it, it is not every true believer. Truly, truly believe. If you look at, if you look at line two, to every believer, the promise of God is given. That is perfect redemption. Every believer. Mm -hmm. But there is no further application that whether you have to be a true believer or, or imperfect believer. Mm -hmm. But the vilest offender, he receives pardon from Jesus the moment he truly, who truly believes. So if someone comes to us, say, I want to believe in Jesus. And we ask him or her, do you truly believe in him? Do you want to truly believe in him? What, what are we going to be meaning by that question? Truly believe. God is the love. 
Hallelujah. Rob, don't go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I want to say that um, actually we may be uh, thinking that uh, believer is a believer. But before God, God knows those who are his. And um, if, for example, somebody who says he is a believer still goes on, you know, to, to sin. And uh, thinking, well, I believe in God. And so for this reason, I am a believer and God is able to see me and you know, recognize him as a believer. Uh, comparing this type of person with somebody who has totally made up his mind, you know, to, to serve the Lord, somebody who has turned 190 degrees, repenting, acknowledging he himself as a sinner, and uh, believing God that. God is able to, to save him and confess his sins and forsake and, you know, get committed serving the Lord. I think I will see the other, I mean, this second person as somebody who truly believe in the Lord. You know, somebody who knows that sin uh, is uh, something that God hates and is always running away from sin compared to the other person that says, well, since I believe God is God, there's only one God and I believe in God, so I can do whatever I like. When the, uh, the trumpet sounds, when Christ comes in any form, you know, to such person's life, we cannot say that person, uh, because he, he knows that God is one, he, he believes that there is God, be able to make heaven. I'm not a judge, but... Uh, before God, God himself cannot condone sin. He cannot tolerate uh, uh, dirtiness. I mean, through one's uh, lifestyle. So I would be able to say to your question, uh, Prof, that the uh, second person, I will see him as a true believer. Why the other person is only are trying to prove to be a believer, but before God, it cannot be recognized. What is the Lamb? Hallelujah. What is the Lamb? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fearless offender who truly believes is a typical example of the one of the criminals that was hung on the cross with Christ. And when it comes to being truly believed, it is God who searches the heart, who sees the intent of the heart and knows who and who and who truly believes. But humanly speaking, like our mommy have just said, someone who has repented and turned around, there are people who say they have repented but they are still admiring where they were. In my, in my community, there's one popular saying, I've never gone to a native doctor, but people, someone can come and say, I know you are, you are going to church. I know you are a Christian. Just, I don't want you to go. Just give me money. Just give me this. Let me go for you. One who truly will not do so. So the village to spend that we all know the history of these criminals that we are crucified with Christ. And one of them, we are making caricature of Christ. The other one truly felt remorse, felt bad about the kind of death he was about to die and what has led him to that type of death. First of all, he felt bad. He acknowledged, he acknowledged the savior in Christ. I wonder, 
I used to say, who preached to him? How did he come to know that truly this guy is going to the is going to be in the paradise? Say, remember me. And he didn't just say, remember me. Christ has looked at the hearts, but he sees the hearts and know truly this is a true repentance. True repentance. One of our hymns, our hymns, he said, he doesn't need anything from us. What he needs from us is true repentance. You know that there are people who say have repented, but they have not truly repented. We all know this. Among the ministers, among the lays, among the prophets, among the apostles, it's only God who searches the hearts that knows who and who who has truly repented or who truly believes. May Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, 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 go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to add Acts chapter 4, verse 12. It says, Neither is there salvation in any other, but there is no other name under heaven given among men. Thereby, Deliver that they nearly honestly believe in that name, the name of Jesus, not because of a miracle, not because of what we want to get, not because we want to uh, get the beautiful things of this world, but because of the salvation of his or her soul. And they believe that Jesus Christ came to this world, died for his or her sin, shed his blood for the remission of his or her sin, genuinely, genuinely, I think that Peter is a genuine Christian, not the one that is there, I'm born again, you know, like the, the, the slang outside now, before you say, I'm a born again Christian, I'm a born again Christian, I'm a born again Christian, but if somebody is truly believed that name, according to the word of God, I think that person is a genuine Christian. That's my own contribution. What is the what, what is, is the name? Hallelujah. 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 I, I I don't know if you if you notice what uh, very Reverend Lesomi did there with verse two. He read it backwards. Uh -huh. uh, and if you read it backwards you only get to the conclusion of a perfect redemption, okay, which was purchased by the blood of Jesus. And I was thinking about it. I said, well, why don't we just go back to Jesus? And what did Jesus say about the true believer? John chapter 17, verse 3. This, these are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 17, verse 3. And he says, this is eternal life that they may know you and the only true God mm -hmm. and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That verse encompasses everything we've been saying about since we started answering that question. Repentance, we don't live in sin, we live only everything. Because if, you know, if we know Jesus Christ, that means we are, we are walking in holiness. If we, if we know the only true God, that means we are walking in holiness. I rest my case. What is the lamb? Hallelujah. Have we killed the dead horse yet, or do we still need to kill it? <laughs> so now we 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 go back to Brian Shagwa and say, so Brian Shagwa, you had all the thoughts that came yes, out of what you asked, and what yeah. are your thoughts? Yeah, those explanations are very helpful. It was, I asked the question to kind of uh, and gender for that discussion about this. I, I remember at the beginning of this uh, session this evening, uh, I think it was Brad G. Day who said he wanted to stay up. But maybe you actually, when you when you ask question about who is a typical Christian, <laughs> so <laughs> who, is, who is a who is a typical Christian? So so it was in 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 that kind of spirit that I asked the question. Who is who is that person who truly believes, as opposed mm -hmm. to 
the person who ordinarily believes and not just truly believes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, what difference does that mm. ever make? Mm. Mm. Thank you so much. So, there's a distinction, just a believer and one who truly believes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, that, that's what we're getting. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for pointing that out. Whoa. Is... And there are multiple patterns <laughs> in the Bible that sort of speaks to that. I don't know if it hammers it home because in Romans 10, 9, it talks about if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart. The declaration with your mouth is one thing, the belief in your heart mm. is another. And uh, if we go to, uh, I believe is somewhere in Isaiah, give me one second, I will pull it up. I believe in Second Chronicles, when you know they were talking about repentance, it talks about if my people Second who are called by my name will humble themselves, number one condition, pray. Number two condition. Number three condition we really talk about. Turn from their wicked ways. So whoever has not turned their, from their wicked ways, uh, Paul addressed them in Romans. Shall we continue in sin? And say grace must abound? Mm -hmm. The question is, the person that continues in sin, is that a true <laughs> believer? You know, so there are there are multiple patterns in the word that kind of alludes to this that there are believers and there are believers. Mm -hmm. Not to talk of uh, uh, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. Hmm. Wow. And just to add to your point, perhaps the kind of offender we are talking about here is the vilest offender. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not just uh, not just your not just the regular offender. <laughs> so 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 if the violence of India comes and wants to testify in church people will be oh okay <laughs> what, what is he up to today uh -huh. so it will be the kind of reaction people. so i think it's it's actually important the more we talk about it the more i, I can see the juxtaposition of the nature of the offender and the kind of evidence he or she has to produce. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, it's true. Right. It's well, true. <laughs> that's that's yeah, that's true. That's really interesting. It's true. <laughs> the violence of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Oh my god, this has been this has been very, 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 very edifying. I never knew there was so much in these three verses, but once again, we thank God for his grace. You know, for always whenever he brings us here every Sunday, he always has something to teach us. And look at everything that has poured out of these three verses today. And I'm I'm thankful. The next time I sing this song. This hymn, I will, I will, I'll, I'll just be on a different level. Yeah, this is this has been very, very helpful. Does anybody else have anything else to say so we can sing the song? Any other thoughts so we can sing the hymn? There are three verses. We need three volunteers. I'll and sing verse three. You sing verse three. Uh, same okay. two. Two. Okay, my mom is you. Two. So the is singing two, so but you have to sing one. Uh, 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 okay. Hmm? Okay. Okay. And so as we sing the song, we'll you know we'll ponder on everything that we have talked about tonight, and I'm I I know that this song will have a new meaning for us. So the question as we close tonight's study is. For everything that we have heard tonight about the writer of this hymn and how this hymn came about, what is our takeaway as we as we as we lay down somewhere in a quiet place tonight and think about tonight's study? What are the things that will come to our mind? I'm not 
asking that we answer that. Just just throwing out there so that we'll we'll dwell on that at the end of this study. Okay, so let's go, Brajide. Verse one. Verse one. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Hallelujah. Verse Oh, the redemption, the parting, sabla. To every believer, the promise of God, the less offender who truly believe that moment from Jesus, a pardon receive. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the air hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus, the Son, and give him the glory, great things he had done. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and greater rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be I wonder a rapture when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come. To the Father, through Jesus the Son, and giving the glory, great things he has done. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much, everybody. This has been a very edifying session of community hymn singing.